Hi everyone. Okay, so last time it was steady state, this time it is no longer steady state. We're now in the um, non-steady state situation, which means we have to introduce the error function. Ooh, I know it's terrifying. Um, but some things get easier, as we're about to see. So what's the question asked? Well, it says determine the carburizing time necessary to achieve a carbon concentration of 0.45 weight percent at a position two millimeters into an iron carbon alloy it initially contained 0.2 weight percent carbon. The surface concentration is to be maintained at 1.3 weight percent carbon and the treatment is to be conducted at 1000 degrees Celsius. It says use the diffusion data for gamma iron in table 5.2 and just so you know that's going to be looking like this. Okay, so with that in mind, let's look at it. Now, what is fixed second law? This is coming from fixed second law. This is our non-steady state diffusion equation. And it looks something like this. Cx minus C naught all over Cs minus C naught is equal to one minus ERF, which stands for error function, x over two square root d Woo. Now we know most of this. We know the position. We know the time. Let's see, what else do we have here? We know the surface concentration and the initial concentration. We even know what our little position concentration is going to be. So all of that is good. But what do we not know? Oh, this, is, this makes things difficult. Well, two things. For one, we don't know our diffusion quotient, and we don't know the time. However, however, our diffusion coefficient, at least, we can get that information from table 5.2. Okay. So first, let's deal with that error function. That's terrifying enough in and of itself. Uh, now, before we can actually work with it, we're going to have to plug everything that we know in. And so I'm going to go ahead and do that. So I'll get 0 0.45 minus 0 0.2 all over 1.30 minus 0 0.2 is, and that's all going to be equal to 0 0.2273, is equal to 1 minus ERF. I'm just going to say Z for the moment, ERF Z. Okay. Now, question for you. Last question, last problem we did, I had to convert to kilograms per meter cubed, and that was pretty much a pain. Why didn't I do it here? Well, the answer is because that conversion would cancel out. You have that same conversion. That conversion is like dividing or multiplying by something. Like I'm dividing by conversion, and then all those conversions simply cancel out. So it doesn't actually matter. You can just leave it as weight percent, which is glorious. It's the one thing that's simpler here. Okay. Now, what I see eventually is that Earth of Z is going to be equal to 1 minus 0.2273. So you get 0.7727. Now, here's where things get a little bit of hazy, but you just have to look at your tables, which is going to be table 5.1 in your textbook, 5.1, to find values. And what you're going to look for is the Earth Z values. If you have 0.7727, you need to find something that is before that and after that. And you'll give me the Z value and the ERF Z value. So let's look for those things right now. So if you look in your table, you're gonna find many entries and you're not gonna find a 0.7727. If you did, oh goodness, you're lucky. But in this case, not, no luck. You gotta find 0.7707 likely and 0.7970. Just in case I haven't updated this and the book has changed a little bit, the earth values might not change, but they might choose different Z values. And you're going to see that there's a value of 0 0.85 for Z here and a 0 0.90, and we don't know what this one is. Okay, so all that works very, very well. Um, but one thing we're running into here you might be confused about is where, why Z, why not X over 2 square root of DT? We're just using our algebra and saying that's pain to write. We're just going to say it's Z for now. Okay? We're just making it a little bit simpler on this. We'll turn it back into that later. We just haven't gotten there yet. 
Now, this value is what we're trying to find, and we're having to make an assumption here. It's not a true assumption, but we're still going to have to make it. We're assuming that things change linearly. Because if they do, and I'm drawing a little plot of this, you know, here is my z, here's perf z. And if I know two points, and here's my little point that I don't know, and I know what the earth z value is in this case. I'm having to make an assumption. I'm assuming that the slope from here to here is the same as the slope from here to here, that those slopes are equal. It's likely not true. There's probably going to be some sort of deflection here, but we're assuming that that error is going to be very, very small. Okay? And in some cases, this is, you know, when we have small enough step sizes, it'll be fine. So since I was talking about slopes, what is a slope? Well, it's where you st end minus where you start. It's the rise over the run. So the rise in this case, I'm going to say is the Z values. Um, and the run would be the... Um, would be my earth Z values. Okay, so rise over run, rise over run. Um, so that's one way we can do it. So let's see if I can make that work properly because I always, always end up messing this up if I'm not careful. Yes, okay. So I would have for this one, when this slope of this little first section where I had the two points at the end, I said, well, this slope right here is gonna be the same. Well, I'm going to have my final position, which is going to be, I'll just say Z minus my initial one, which will be the bottom point. Okay. And that's going to be over my final Earth Z, 7727. Oh, sorry about that. Got that a little bit terrible handwriting there. Point 7727 minus my initial one, which is 0 0.7707. So that slope should equal my other slope, which is this guy at the end, minus this initial one, all over 0 0.7970 minus 0 0.7707. So you see this, it's just a slope here and a slope there, and we're assuming that they are equal, okay? And then if we calculate that, well, we're going to get that Z is equal to 0 0.854. And here's where we bring back the thing you're saying, well, where did it go? What, what happened to our X over 2 square root of DT? Well, that's going to also be equal to X over 2 square root of DT. Okay, so this is where we bring it back. We, got, we escaped the error function, and now we're at stuff that makes more sense. We know X. We don't know time. Diffusion coefficient, ugh, that's where we get stuck again. But it told us that we could pull that data from table 5.2. Now, why do we need to pull it from a table? Why don't we just have like a number for diffusion? Well, it's because remember that diffusion coefficient D is actually temperature dependent. It's a function of temperature. And it looks something like this. We have D naught, then exponential of negative Q over RT. Second thing is that temperature is Kelvin, not Celsius. So to go from Celsius to Kelvin, well, I have a thousand degrees Celsius. I'm going to add 273 to that to get to Kelvin. Okay, so we did that. Now, if we pull all of our data from that table, we get that D naught is going to be 2.3 times 10 to the negative fifth meters squared per second. And my Q is going to be equal to 148 kilojoules per mole. And I'll make sure that everything correctly there. I believe I did. I want to check your units. I'm going to write them down correctly. Yes. And I'm going to have my R value. If you look it up, it's going to be 8.31 joules per mole Kelvin. Notice. You will often see this activation energy in kilojoules. You're going to, need to multiply it by a thousand to get two regular old joules. Now, if I plug that into my equation, I get d is equal to 2.3 times 10 to the negative fifth. 
I'm neglecting to write my unit. You should write yours in. It's just I'm trying to save on time and space. This is a longer problem. 148,000 all over 8.31 times 1273. And if I plug that in my calculator correctly, it comes out to 1.93 times 10 to the negative 11 meters squared per second. And if you notice now, if we look back at our equation for z, we know everything except for time. So z is going to be equal to, and that will be equal to x over 2 square root of dt. I'm going to solve for time, so let's go ahead and do that. So x is going to be, sorry, um, x over 2z is equal to the square root of dt. I square both sides. x squared over 4z squared is equal to dt. And finally, time will be equal to x squared over 4z squared d. That should come out to be seconds. Now, I'm going to let you plug in all the numbers there. Um, be very careful the unit, and what it should come out to be is 7.1 times 10 to the fourth seconds. And then there are 3,600 seconds in one hour, which means it'll come out to be 19.7 hours. Whew! That was a long problem, a ton of steps. But with this, we really hit on everything that you're going to see with steady state diffusion. Sorry, not steady, non steady state diffusion. So I really hope this helps you. Thank you for listening, and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.